<clears throat> Vinnie Milk is outdoors. Um, I wanted to talk about the Western Bass Nation deal. Uh, it's day two right now, and uh, my prediction is kind of off, it seems like. Um, I think I was thinking like 14 pounds a day. I think the leader had like 12 pounds. Um, so I wanted to kind of talk through is what I think is actually going on out there. But first, because what I've seen lately on social media and I was just going through my boat and kind of, uh, I don't know if I've said anything, but, you know, kind of restructuring my electronics a little bit, uh, doing some rewiring that I'm getting ready to do some fiberglass work on the outside or I guess gel coat or whatever. I'm just getting ready for the fall because I will be hitting the lake a couple times. Um, just hit some, just, I just need to get out there. I need to get out there and catch something because it's been a little while and I get the itch and some, I just get stressed out and stuff. It's fishing's, you know, a relief. I granted I haven't competed in a while, um, which is fine with me. I'm kind of taking a break and then we'll get back into more tournaments and whatnot. But anyway, out there and, uh, you know, pop up some fishing videos, just, just, uh, just take the time off my, you know, what blow farts out in the wind or whatever just to shoot the shit and listen to the guys and it seems like this forward facing sonar things back out um and it, it in the universe i just thought it was just randy block it you know blowing smoke out of everybody's rear end complaining like a old man on uh the kids crossing the lawn uh once again like which is fine i mean everybody can have their opinion on it but that guy's just like total forward facing sonar um um basher hates it completely it seems like uh I don't know if he's actually utilizing it to try to compete. I've, I stopped listening to him a while ago. Seemed like a nice guy. I've met him once or twice. Or I think we ran into each other at the boat ramp on Mead uh, one day when they can't, when they were, there was like a wind advisory on the Overton. And I actually launched, but I don't think he did. I can't remember. But he, I mean, he seemed like a nice guy. I just don't like his politics when I hear him talk. I just really don't like it. And then uh, his view on forward facing sonar, I think, is based more on um, a grasp of nostalgia and fishing and, and I have that too you know I you know I'm not that I'm not old old but there are certain things about fishing that I that I miss and <clears throat> I don't I see lo we're losing uh, in various regards uh, but when it comes to technology and the advancements in technology I I do look at it skeptically at Fort Faces Sonar. I've seen it on the History Channel like a long, long time ago, and I was wondering why I wasn't in fishing. Um, then they brought it into fishing, and I was like, man, this is going to be cool. This is going to be fun. And then it started winning tournaments. Or it didn't win tournaments. It, help you find the, it helps you find the fish to win the tournaments, right? Well, so does uh, other at various electronic systems you run in your boat. Side imaging, whatever, uh, regular 2D sonar, mapping, all these things have its their their role in finding fish, right? Or it can be utilized as a tool to find fish. And this one happens to be a really good one uh, and put in the right hands. Uh, and we found that over the last few years that there are certain people that are more adept at utilizing this tool in various situations. But this is a tool and it's more applicable in certain situations rather than others. And just because you have this tool doesn't mean you're gonna win the tournament. And if the majority of people have, happen to have this uh, this tool, who's gonna be uh, swinging it better, right? Who's gonna hammer the nail better? Who's gonna screw the screw in better? Uh, that's what it comes down to when it, when it comes to utilizing this. So it seems like the argument is now, or not the argument, the proposal is to ban this thing from professional tournament events, which there's been whispers of that in the past or a limit on some kind of electronics, which I can see a limit on electronics, like how much you could take, whether it be like, let's go do one graph on the front, one graph in the back, or two graphs in total, or whatever the case may be, because there are limits on other things, and they're usually, in any sporting event, there's distinct rules that are uh, that allow you to do certain things, and we do that with lures, we do that with rods, we do that with boats, we do that with certain, in certain regards to other uh, significant aspects of, of the fishing game. Um, but we haven't really done that with electronics and maybe it's time to do it. I don't know To me. I every time something like this happens whenever uh, uh, a new Innovation occurs. I'm trying to figure out how I can utilize it I'm not so set in my ways where oh well, we can't do uh, This is gonna ruin everything now in this regard Which has allowed a lot of people that can learn 
this technology have been able to target fish that have maybe not been targeted before. I can see us getting into a bait from a uh, scientific point of view uh, when it comes to the regulations of each individual lake. Maybe we we'll figure out a way, uh, this might change some of the management tactics, when it, or tactics, some of the management plans on various lakes when it comes to limits, lengths, uh, when it comes to catch and release, when it comes to conservation issues, I can see us having that talk. Now, when it comes to tournament issues, you know, I really don't have a bone to pick. I don't care if they ban it or not. I'd rather them not ban it or rather them put limitations on electronics like they have in other aspects of the fishing world um, so that you can utilize the tool, but you don't outright ban it. <clears throat> you just put parameters around what uh, a left and light, right lateral limit of what you can, how you can utilize it. What I mean by that would be a reasonable thing would be a, the graph thing. You can only have one or two graphs. That way you have to kind of pick, you have to strategically come up with, okay, I want to run um, my whatever, 360 or whatever, and my live targeting, and I can either do one or the other, or I have to split screen it, which kind of impedes my ability to really pick out targets. You have to make those decisions instead of just throwing up like four or five graphs or a TV up there, or whatever the case it may be. You make it a little more strategically oriented where you have to actually pick and choose. But even that being said, let's say if you just leave it as is right now, it's not that every tournament's gonna be won by forward facing sonar if you pick the schedules right. There are certain places like I when the MPFL schedule that when I fished that inaugural season, um, one of the things that did hurt me, one, I didn't know any of those fish, fisheries, which that's why I was like, I was one of the best comeback guys. Like I do really bad the first day I'd come back, the second, third day, is because I, there's a, I was a little behind the curve and when he puts a little bit of fire under me, I'll figure it out. But the reason being is a lot of that, a lot of the tournaments turned out to be shallow water uh, shootouts, right? Uh, you look at them side fishing which i am uh, uh amazing at i'm like to my own horn i mean i guess it's kind of narcissistic I'm amazing side i i am really good at side fishing i'm phenomenal at it i that's what i do there's very few fish that i can't uh catch but anyway that's regardless uh but a lot of those tournaments that were won they were based off shallow fishing granted i did use my ford facing sonar somewhere in like florida but I didn't do it well in there. I could see the fish, but I get hung up on those fish and the winning fish are in the grass. So, I mean, it's a lot more nuanced than just saying that every tournament's won by a forward facing sonar and that's what, that's just in all be all. Granted, you can flip the sonar sideways and kind of utilize it for shallow water fishing and seabeds. <coughs> but for the most part, uh, it has got its time and place. And sure, in certain uh, sections of the country, it's gonna play more than others. When you go up to those smallmouth fisheries, when you go to like a table rock or or to, uh, uh, what I refer to two three store or two story fisheries, where you have these like a, like a meat or whatnot, it does play. It helps you locate the fish. It helps you see how the fish react. But it, let's go to wherever sight fishing, or let's go to Florida, um, and, and nine times out of ten, it might not play as big. It did earlier this year. I know they was it Tyler Rivet or somebody won a tournament off of it in one of those canals. But there's huge fish that are up in the in, in the thick stuff, and you can a lot of times it's won that way. So we're kind of picking and choosing, you know, our battles when we're attacking this forward-facing sonar. And that's just my opinion. Now I'm almost 10 minutes into this, but uh, it is a. I think Brian Latimer said some made a post, and that's how I think about it too. It's just like politics. What it seems to happen is we kind of are pick a lot of these pros that are, are kind of bitching about this and, and other other pros bitch about other things and it kind of goes in their agenda. When they see their own light fading and their inability to grasp a technology or a technique in somebody else is and they're outplaying them, that's when the squeaky wheel starts really squeaking because instead of getting better at the technology or adopting it or doing whatever you need to do to compete, um, it's just easier to whine and complain about it. Now, I'm not saying that their complaints aren't completely um, outlandish. I'm just saying that that's what happens. And my uh, stance uh, coming from the I'm a Marine or whatever, yeah, I'm gonna complain about it. I'll bitch about it uh, a little bit. Like, oh man, but in this case, it's like, I, but first and foremost, I'm looking at it. I'm like, okay, well, how do I utilize this? How do I learn this technology? How do I get this technology? 
how's it going to make me a better angler? How's it going to do this? How am I going to um, incorporate it with certain techniques? Or maybe there's a different way I can use it that everybody else isn't using it as uh, using it. And that's what I do with lures too. So when a certain lure comes out that it, it just kick in butt or whatever, I'm like, mm. or maybe I have certain lures that like I keep talking about lures that get uh, discontinued. I'm like, how am I going to make this thing? Or how am I going to come up with a bait that's similar to this thing that reacts because this is just money and nobody's using it anymore. Uh, there's all I'm just I that's how anglers are that's part of the sport is uh, how do you incorporate new technologies how do you incorporate new techniques how do you learn it better than or learn it either to the top tier anglers learn it as good as the top tier anglers and then utilize it better than they they do in certain scenarios um, that's the way I look at it now I'm not saying there shouldn't be limits as I said there should be some kind of limits like golf can only have like 14 clubs okay, well, maybe we don't have so many grabs, but technology-wise, tell it's to the point where um, I can see maybe in the future there might be some technology that you might have to limit, but right now, forward-facing sonar is not that, in my opinion, um, or ban, I should say not limit, ban. Um, so I, that's where I lay on this. I'm more of like, let's adopt this and let's innovate. Now, yeah, that has this technology kind of cause certain pros to kind of fade in the background yeah well it's a failure to adapt you have to constantly adapt and overcome it one with age and this happens in any pro sport too is as you get the younger crowd they may be training techniques from a young age so you get guys that throw faster fastballs maybe on average through the generations and as you get older you can't throw the same 100 mile an hour fastball but now you're throwing 97 but now you might have to incorporate it. Maybe your off-speed pitch a little bit more. Same thing in like soccer, uh, like uh, take for instance, like a Messi or whatever. He, maybe he's not as explosive as he was in the past, but he can put the ball where he needs to put the ball to make things happen. So he starts utilizing his ability to place the ball in, 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 um, in the right spot at the right time. And maybe he's not sprinting up and down the field as he once did uh, as a younger. And it's adaptation as part of being a professional athlete as you go through the ages there's one thing about having the natural skill and then the the our natural ability and the skill and the years of practice you put in there and when you get in the game and then as your career progresses uh adapting whatever the changing body the changing competition and in this case the changing technology and really um really just doing it otherwise you're going to fade into the background it's just the nature of the game unfortunately or not unfortunately it just is what it is otherwise everybody would just do it right okay anyway lake pal this is what is going down lake pal in my opinion i've heard the reaction bite is what is getting a lot of our uh, guys but here's what happens at lake pal when you're at lake pal there's fish everywhere right i can stop pretty much anywhere on that lake cast a grub or whatever and catch a smallmouth what this does though on a lake like lake pal especially if you're not used to it where there's fish just everywhere you get sucked into all these little fish because a lot of these places, they're little fish. I was talking about the last video about where these big fish live a little bit. I didn't give too much of the juice away, but there are areas, there are certain types of rock formations, there are certain places, certain weeds you're looking at, for, certain congruent structure cover relationships that larger fish tend to uh, uh, hang around on that lake. Like, I can't believe that a 12 pound bag is leading Lake Powell, to be totally honest at this point. To me, I can go there and sleep 12. I could sleep, okay, I, I, when I saw 12 pounds, this is my initial reaction, when I saw 12 pounds on there, I was thinking, I've caught almost 12 pounds in this time, almost this time of year, probably August, on accident, like, I mean accident. I mean, like, because we're fishing or whatever, and I'm accident, I have a rod hanging off the deck and a lure, not even in the water, hanging off the side of the boat, and having two, three pounders jump and grabbing it. I'm not even kidding, that has happened. And I was like, I pulled essentially 12 pounds from doing that. And it's happened multiple times in a day uh, or in certain spots there. So it's not, it's like, it's, it's not that it's completely easy, but if you put some sort of effort, and if you know the lake a little bit, uh, you should be able to pull 12 pounds out of either. I thought 12 pounds you'd be, yeah, probably 10 in the 10 to 20th position. If you were pulling 12 pounds a day, that's what I thought. I thought 13, 14, 15 would be top. Uh, top. Um, but I think a lot of guys get sucked into catching these small fish and they're running around the water instead of, you know, like you did. And some of these guys that fished the U.S. Open, they ought to have came, they should have came out of it kind of like that. It's like you, you got a spot, you hit it, 
bam, 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 catch a couple of good fish and then run a different spot. And until you find those places where they reload, uh, um, man, my brain is farting. But these certain formations I was talking about, these certain places, and with all these tamarack bushes up, until you find those certain stretches, then you hunker down and get that. And you don't want to milk it too much because Lake Powell is still somewhat like Lake Mead. There's, I mean, there's a lot of fish, but it does it reloads, but it doesn't necessarily re reload like other places. Anyway, that's what should have happened. Now, what it did happen doesn't matter what should have happened. What, what matters is what is going on there in the competition. So it is what it is. Somebody's going to win it, and it looks like probably you know 12 pounds a day. I think that. It, that lake is not showing out what it is there. And I just think that the guys just don't know the lake very well, especially with the, the water coming up and what the, the changes are. And I, I, I'm not saying that to bash anybody because uh, I know that lake like the back of my hand. I grew up there. I fished it this time of year, um, fished it when the water was way up, fished it when the water was way down, um, fished it in between, fished it with up and down. Uh, like I said, I haven't fished the Southern End all that much, but if I was there uh, fishing this tournament too, I'd have ran to the, the mid lake section where I have those spots. There are a couple of canyons that I know of that it, like there's no excuse. Like you go there and you lock in a Cinco this time of year and you're pulling in at, you know, 13 to 15 pounds, easy. And I say easy, I'm saying I've done it easily um, just fishing there for like an hour or two. And these canyons and then making the run back because it was just me in the boat and it's pretty sketchy but if i was in a tournament like this to qualify you know qualify the class i would make that run all day and then the next just to make sure i was gassed up but <clears throat> especially the these spots i'm thinking of because some of these places hardly ever see fishermen there's large uh, and i'm talking about large mouth areas the others the big small mouth of lake powell here's the other thing if you're this far in this video the big small mouth of lake powell they are far and few between there but there are spots where they are especially this time of year and you can come across them and really get right quick. And um, so to me, I target largemouth there when I'm, if I'm gonna fish a tournament, but you can go around and hit some of these spots, especially, like I said, there's a particular type of rock, there's a particular type of rock for big smallmouth, there's a particular type of rock for big largemouth in that lake. But if you hit these, these places at the right time, you can get right on smallmouth. Well, for the most part, there are certain areas where you wanna go and get your two, three pound uh, largemouth and then there are four or five, six pound kickers in there too. And I know a lot of people don't, even guys that fish Lake Powell a lot don't understand them. There are places there and I've had them. I've had, I've had a 10 pounder in there. The, ten, the lake record's 10 pounder. I've had a 10 pounder. My grandpa's had a 10 pounder spit up right at the boat. Uh, huge caught six, seven pounders, you know, eight. I've had a number of them jump. I mean, I've seen them in there. They're there. I've caught them in the six, you know, I'll call it four to seven pound range. It's not unheard of, they're there, they live there. It's just really tough to differentiate Lake Powell. It's really tough to break it down if you haven't been there a lot. Anyway, I'm going on and on about it because Lake Powell's like a passion of mine. Love that lake, it's my favorite lake in the world. Uh, and it's just kind of like, oh man, this lake isn't showing out. But it's actually probably good. I mean, people go there regardless if the fishing's awesome or not because it's, a, it's such a beautiful lake. Um, but the, it's just not showing out, I'm just to tell you that if you go there, Granted, you don't have to target bass if you go there, like largemouth, smallmouth, there's stripers all over the place. There's giant crappie. Nobody talks about that. The crappie fishing in there is phenomenal when you find those things. There's like one, two pounders. I took a person there one time a number of years ago, uh, and she couldn't believe, like first cast, we were set up camp, she cast from the shore, bam, like a two pound crappie. Then we go over here, bam, didn't catch a small crappie the whole entire trip. One pounder, one and a half pounder, two pounder. Like there's giant crappie in there now, walleye. Go in there and you catch. You can go catch walleye if you wanted to. I mean, the catfishing is a. If you do anything, if you don't have a boat, go there, catfish. There's channel cat all over that place. There's no excuse not to catch channel cat. They're everywhere. And like used to do that at night, uh, just throw a rod out, just see so if you can catch catfish. Um, every time, you, you get something. You at least get bit. You at least get bit of catfish. Screwed your bait up and is, you know, doing whatever. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it there. So. Hopefully somebody somebody will win today and we'll find out who's uh, gone further into uh, whatever. I don't even know what the next thing is, the championship or whatever for the Western Invitation. I was just excited they had a tournament at Lake Powell finally once every 20 years. All right, peace.